Hey, what's up guys? I'm c Love, and this is what 16 hours of video editing looks like. In my last video, I brought you a limited run of 7 very custom aromatic cedar bluebird houses and I wanted to take a moment to give you an update. I gave two of them away to friends and family members and hung three of them up to see if I had any takers, and I sure did. Within a month, one of them has attracted some new tenants and they have completely moved in. They will live here rent free forever and hopefully make lots of little baby bluebirds for us to enjoy. On the saw now is something that is seemingly pretty simple to make, but like most awesome things, takes a lot of time to get right. I came across the hardwood wad of a lifetime with over two dozen different species from around the world from my new great buddy Colin and decided to use some of it to make some very unique floating wine bottle display boards. The concept is pretty simple and works by counterbalancing the weight of the wine bottle with the weight and angle of the display board. This is a great project if you have leftover cut offsets you can glue together to shape and cut as needed. I used mostly curly walnut for these and with a paduke and hackberry piece as a bonus. If priced correctly, I think these may be a hot seller in the right market and if not, they are absolutely sure to make a great gift for the person that you already have in mind. I made a total of 16 of these gems for this video and I learned a whole lot. I'll show you some things you should do and I'll tell you some things you shouldn't. Come on, let's take a look. The first thing I've got to do is pick out some gnarly looking but very highly figured walnut pieces that are four quarters or one inch thick. These look pretty rough but will smooth out nicely with the hand sander and I'll get to that shortly. I'm going to end up producing several kilograms of sawdust by the time I make all the cuts to clean up the edges and square up my pieces. You will notice several times the kickback coming off the saw. This is when the piece that you are cutting off catches the blade and rockets back towards the operator. That could be you. Always be careful and keep this in mind when cutting off tiny pieces from your stock. Please also notice a couple times I'm holding a tape measure while on camera. This is to make it look like I know what I'm doing. I'm starting to realize that it's going to be quite difficult for me to include everything I learned in this video, but you already know I try to keep my videos on the short side, so I'll do the best I can. Contact me on Instagram if you'd like a copy of my build notes. I made a jig to hold my pieces at 45 degrees while I used a one and a quarter inch, that's 32 millimeters in diameter, hole saw bit to drill the area where the neck of the bottle will rest. It doesn't seem to matter if you cut the 45 degree angle on either end of the board first or later, as long as you measure correctly whenever you go to drill the hole in the center of your board. I'm sure someone out there has a much better way of doing this, but because the hole saw bottoms out while on the drill press, I just bought another hole saw bit and put it in my hand drill. I then clamped my test piece to the piece I was working on and just eyeball drilled through the other side. This seemed to work pretty well as I was being pretty careful to make sure that I had my hole saw bit lined up with the hole on my test piece before starting the drill into my working piece. I can't wait to show you something you shouldn't do, so I'll go ahead and get to that now. That is beating on your workpiece with a hammer to try to get it to break out of there. I got lucky and was able to save this one, but I cracked a different one, which was very saddening because at this point, these pieces are starting to look pretty nice. I'll make sure to keep a hammer off of them from this point forward. After I very carefully take the time to drill out the remainder of the holes, I'll sand everything down nice and smooth. I started off with 80 grit, second was 120, and I finished them off with 220, making sure to pop the grain in between every single grit of sandpaper. I don't know if this makes a huge difference as opposed to just popping the grain in between the last two different grits of sandpaper, but I had the time, so I went ahead and did it anyways. I'll take a couple seconds to customize the side edges so they look a little nicer and feel a whole lot better while handling them. Plus, you get to see a little more of the grain patterns too. On these edges, I'd recommend either a 30 or a 45 degree angle, and don't take off too much. You just barely need to nip the edge off of there. Next, I'll wipe everything down with mineral spirits. This will take off all the sawdust and show me what the grain patterns will look like once I've got them oiled and sealed up. This piece that I'm handling now is probably my favorite from this set. You can see there is tons of figure and the color of the sapwood and heartwood really contrast with each other very nicely. After that, I'll treat all my pieces with not sponsored Howard Feed and Wax. This is an orange oil and beeswax wood polish and conditioner. It smells super great and works wonders for your non-food preparation surfaces. Next is another not sponsored product I used for this project from the Big Orange Home Improvement Store here in the USA. It's a finishing paste wax that will seal the surface of my pieces and hopefully protect them if there's a spill. This part took quite a while but was worth every second. These display boards came out very smooth and were worth the time and effort to make them and I'll definitely be making some more of these in the future. All of these are between 3 and 4 inches wide with the exception of the very first one that I made which is only 2 and 7 eighths. I think my favorite ones ended up being the longest ones at 13 inches. Start from the top of your board and measure down 5 inches and make a mark. This is where the top of your hole saw bit will first touch your board when you have it mounted on a 45 degree jig. 
If you drill it this way, the hole will be pretty close to the center of the board on both sides and make it so you can display a full large wine bottle on either side, which is pretty cool. Someone has already asked me if you can take some of the wine out of there and put the bottle back on, and I believe you would be able to, but it would take some experimenting. After you smash that subscribe button, make sure and leave me a comment and let me know how much you can take out of there before it stops working properly. If you are going to attempt this project, I would recommend not using your best piece first as there is a learning curve on this one. Some of mine seem to work a little better than others and act differently when I use different wine bottles on them. Please share this video with the woodworker in your life and come back and see me. I'll keep posting awesome stuff as often as I can and I can't thank you guys enough for your support. I'll talk to you again soon.